sat comfortably at the top of the food chain for many thousands of years now, as a species, we actually haven't been around for that long compared to other creatures. From what we know about our evolutionary history, modern humans have lived on Earth for some 300,000 years. But as long as that may feel, it's just a small blip in Earth's overall story. The dinosaurs, for example, probably the most famous pre-human life form, dominated the Earth for 165 million years in total. Many, many times more than we have up until now. And it's thought they would almost certainly have lasted even longer were it not for the asteroid. We know, as well, that there are some other species that are even older than that. Horseshoe crabs, for instance, are some 440 million years old. And it's thought that jellyfish have been around for 700 million years, or more. The average length of one human lifespan, while it is far longer than many species, is still significantly dwarfed by many others. In the world today, Greenland sharks can survive for more than 300 years, around five times what we can. Even the humble and more commonly seen tortoise famously outlives us. But then again, in recent times, humans have at least seen their average life expectancy increase, although not solely as a result of a plain evolutionary change. Our lengthening lifespans are thought to be more thanks to a combination of increased scientific knowledge plus the use of something that the rest of the natural world doesn't have. Technology. Tales of the Fountain of Youth, a mystical fountain capable of restoring people to their younger selves, have been mentioned for thousands of years. But the desire to systemically eliminate aging entirely did have a particular resurgence in just the last couple centuries. Before, scientists had mainly thought that aging was an unstoppable force of nature and a part of evolution. But in the 1900s, experiments began to show what we now know to be the case, that mortality rates can be influenced in various ways. Factors such as how much food an organism consumes or what kind of genes it inherits were found to have an effect. So that, from then, science started to see aging as something that could perhaps be slowed down. Ever since, anti-aging research has been continuous and rapid. And more than just in cosmetics, this isn't only skin deep, it's cell deep. With innovations including CRISPR-Cas9 gene therapy, meaning that we can now analyze our biological makeups with never-before-seen intricacy and accuracy. It's a field that does have its fair share of controversy, however. And on the methods and ethics of reverse aging, there are various splits in the scientific world. In a purely practical sense, some researchers maintain that, despite our many breakthroughs, aging is still unbeatable. In fact, one 2021 study conducted by an international team of scientists claims that human lifespans haven't actually been elongated at all, even up until now. The study, published in Nature Communications, suggests that, statistically, the average age is much higher today only because there are now far fewer deaths in young age. Meanwhile, in an earlier study conducted by a team at the University of Arizona in 2017, researchers went so far as to claim mathematical proof that age can't be stopped. One potentially concerning argument put forward here is that as our bodies do tend to break down and degrade over time, then attempting to reverse that process could actually worsen it. However, for all those who say otherwise, there are many that are convinced that an age cure is out there. For one, the British biomedical gerontologist Aubrey de Grey, who specifically studies aging, has even said on record that the first person to live to be 1,000 years old is already alive at this moment. What do you think about that prediction? Do you reckon you'll be around to one day celebrate your millennium birthday? Let us know in the comments. In March 2022, more research was added to the argument to support the likes of Aubrey de Grey. 
details of an experiment in the US were released which showed that scientists were able to add a mixture of molecules to existing cells in mice, and that by doing so, they could effectively reverse the aging process in the older mice cells with seemingly no side effects. Elderly mice made young again, by some measures, and a scenario that was once science fiction only turned into science fact. There is still a long way to go though, and in whatever form it takes, indefinite living probably won't be an instantaneous breakthrough. No company is going to simply release a pill anytime soon that just lets you live forever. More realistic projections tend toward there one day being a pill or medicine treatment or procedure that more modestly lengthens your lifespan. And then, perhaps sooner rather than later, those life lengtheners will allow us to live long enough to lengthen some more and some more until a fits-all cure is discovered. Again, in a general sense, gene editing is arguably the most ambitious and promising technology now available that is geared toward reverse aging like this, with deliberate gene top-ups and extractions being one potential route forward. Elsewhere, now technology remains a promising innovation. Broadly, this is the manipulation of matter near the atomic level, but specifically, there are predictions that it could soon lead to there being microscopic machines capable of patrolling your bloodstream, which would then repair damaged and aging cells as though on site. Furthermore, tech like that might then become so advanced that our future selves end up replacing our natural bloodstreams with a purpose-brewed artificial blood from the outset. The futurist Ray Kurzweil is one of the leading voices in the debate surrounding nanotech. Although, again, it's a controversial topic, not least because of the potential for invasion of privacy and because of concerns around the approaching AI singularity. What would that mean if the robots were literally inside us? Nevertheless, if the headiest nanotech predictions do come true, then it seems we'll see them within just years and decades, i.e. within this generation. And failing all of that, perhaps we will see mind uploads in real life to at least preserve our consciousness until a better option becomes available. Again, it sounds like science fiction, but there are growing numbers of genuine, usually wealthy backers. Indeed, when thinking about what the future of Earth might look like under these conditions, the issue of money could be key. If it does arrive, then reverse aging technology will almost certainly be expensive, and perhaps only available to the super rich. So how would that inequality gap manifest itself? Let us know your predictions. Even if the economics of it were fair and equal though, there'd still be a whole host of new issues to contend with. Notably, the US physician and humanist Leon Kask is well known for his anti-immortality views, arguing that if we do one day become immortal, then we would also cease being human. He says that there are virtues to being mortal, such as the appreciation of life and being able to make sense of our time here, and that those would be lost in living forever. With no cap on how long we can last for, people would feel no rush or drive to succeed, or change, or have fun. When looked at it like that, immortality might even turn out to be extremely boring. Before long, there could be all of time ahead of us, but nothing new to do. The ongoing quest for immortality certainly raises plenty of questions, but one day soon, we could be the first ones to be provided with answers. Because whether it's by tweaking our biochemistry, or it's through the rearrangement of the genes that make us, or it's via tiny machines custom-built to keep our cells suspended in time, that's why we could be the first generation to live forever.